Catch Amazing Minds Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time on YouTube, Google, Apple, and Spotify for podcasters. Zambia's first late night show. <laughs> Coffee is done. <laughs> ah. Subscribe, guys. Subscribe, economy. <laughs> we are subject to the elements of the economy. Please do subscribe. Get us to 1K subscribers so we can have sponsors mm. and buy some coffee. You're welcome to the show. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe, hit the bell and share. This is Amazing Minds, Zambia's first late night show. We have three segments on the show. The Monday show, which is the political segment of the show. We have the Wednesday show, which is our educative segment of the show. And we have Bible Talks, ideally, which should air every Friday. So Monday show is not Monday show because it airs on Monday. It airs on Monday because it's a Monday show. So the political segment, the political segment of the show is called the Monday show, the educative segment of the show is called the Wednesday show and Bible talks is Bible talks, which, uh, yeah, it's just that which airs on Fridays. So because of the great tribulation we're experiencing now in Zambia, Lord shedding and whatnot, El Nino, we have decided to suspend the Wednesday show for a while. We said this earlier, but I'm just saying it again to you. And we have two shows now, Monday show and Bible talks, which air on any given day of the week, respectively. Um, but we'll get back in schedule once we sort out our energy issues on this end. <laughs> You're lamping it all on the state. Ah, I tell you, I tell once you. Once we sort out our, our energy issues our as, energy, a <laughs> as a country. Expect the show to get back. At least be guaranteed that you will have two shows every week. Uh, we didn't have a show last week due to uh, extra technical issues, more than just power. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, but we're glad we're back here and we love to have you guys here. Shout out to Mr. Bruce. We know Mr. Bruce is a consistent watcher of this show. Him and his wife, shout out. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And um, Mr. Tansofwa, he calls me every now and then. Shout out. Uh, thank you so much for watching this show. I'm sure you're watching it with your workmates. Yeah, uh, shout out to Mr. Tansofwa. Yes, thank you so much. So please do get us to a thousand subscribers and... Yeah, that's enough for the intro. I'm here with Mr. Chofaya. Sincerely. How are you doing, sir? Um, I'm all right. Oh, as we call him. Uh, no, 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 please, please. please. <laughs> hey, let the people know. <laughs> no, let that, let that name end in the background. <laughs> You look like you are happy about it. I know there are sometimes when someone gives you a name, mm. you just have to accept you. Oh yeah, ha 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 ha. So they stop. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How have you been? I've been there, my friend. Yeah, it feels like it's been a while. Huh? Yeah, how have you been yourself? I've been good, man. I'm a blessed young man. You know the you know the drill. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so we have a couple. I like your of... swag. Yeah. Yeah, at my cross belt. Eh? Thank you so much. Yeah, suspenders. Yeah. Suspenders. <laughs> yes. No, I know, but both both is correct. Suspenders, cross belts. Ah, okay. I just you know choose the fancy. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm going more fancy. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have a couple of things to discuss on the show. It will be quite a long show today uh, with all that had happened uh, during last week. There was so much wrangles, especially with the PF. 
To start with, we're discussing the C5 killing, uh, which spark mixed feelings among members of the public. Then we'll discuss Charity Katanga's higher, higher buses, uh, which are to be forfeited to the state. And then we'll go into the patriotic front wrangles. I like how Mr. Kawana puts it. He says, uh, which we'll show you later on on the show, but he says PF has grown so big. It has grown so big. It needs three presidents and two SGs. <laughs> fantastic Five. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. They are forming up the Fantastic Five. Mm. So this is what we have on the show today. I am excited. Mr. Chofia is, are you ready? Yeah, I was born ready. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I love to hear him say that. <laughs> <laughs> so police gunned down four armed criminals in Lusaka. Uh, last week, we heard of an incident at Interland Puma Filling Station in Chilenja area where the police gunned down a couple of armed robbers. Um, mm, four of them. Four armed robbers. We just saw a video of people's bodies being lumped into. It's quite graphical. The images you're about to see, <laughs> take a look. Not for sensitive viewers. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not for sensitive viewers. Oh, we are serious. We are not serious. Not for sensitive viewers. Yeah, so please take a look. <laughs> Did you guys see just how they were throwing the bodies in? There was even one body that fell. It's mm. like, mm. I, I hear dead bodies are heavier than okay. uh, when they than when they are alive. I don't know how true that is. <laughs> than when they are alive. <laughs> <laughs> Do you call them bodies when they are alive? Oh, yeah, um, right. yeah I, I don't know how I can best say it. Uh, but I understand people, what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, uh -huh. Like, Mundoku of Amalema. Amalema, yeah, yeah, it's true. Eh? Or it it's, could be true. That's what they say, right? It could be true because when you're alive and you're being lifted, probably there's some energy that you're exiting as well. Oh, no, Chako. Yeah, controlling and one or two muscles. Like a later guy. Yeah, mm. yeah. So you could see how they were just throwing the body. It's like these guys are used to handling mm -hmm. dead bodies. I had an incident of, I have a friend who uh, witnessed a road accident. Um, and by the time the police were getting there, one of the individuals involved in the accident had some parts of his body um, separated from the body. And so when the police arrived, <clears throat> they told them, we don't have enough gloves, but here are the gloves we have. You help us put the body parts into the car. Mm. Yeah, so my friend and his friend had to pick up minced body parts. He didn't eat meat for a while. And uh, you could just tell that someone who has never done that job before is going to really be traumatized and affected. Mm. Yeah, but these guys were just doing it. And uh, the police gave us their side of the story. They explained to us why, because obviously this raised a few concerns with members of the public. Uh, so the police did explain why this happened. Police throttled a robbery at Interland Puma filling station in Lusaka's Rivara area and shot dead four criminals who were armed with an AK-47 assault rifle. This happened on June 30th, 2024, around 19 hours. Concerned members of the public tipped police officers that there were criminals who were about to stage a robbery at Interland Puma filling station. Officers from the anti-robbery crack squad unit rushed to the scene where they found a tinted and registered white Toyota Arion parked near to the filling station. Officers challenged the occupants by blocking the Toyota Arion, and immediately four people, one armed with an AK-47 assault rifle, came out and scampered in different directions before to the Toyota Arion sped off. The suspects were met by bullets and sustained fatal gunshot wounds. They were rushed to the university teaching hospital where they were all declared deceased. I really like how we report stuff in Zambia. It's very interesting how that the four suspects scampered, one with an AK-47, armed with an AK-47, and as they were scampering, they were met 
<laughs> Mate, yeah. with bullets <laughs> it's like where they were running towards they encountered bullets when in fact the people that were shooting them were the ones they were running away from and yeah and also uh, yeah. you said uh, that they were rushed exactly i was about to comment on just that you were rushing bodies we saw the bodies mm. that were being thrown mm. were they really rushed to uth or they were rushed to the mortuary mm. Mm. i don't know uh the road however was a witness uh to these said murders indeed the wars do have ears i guess the roads do have eyes i rushed to come and witness what was going on and uh, discovered that there were people lying down and they were still alive they were lying down and you know rules of engagement are that you must only put a trigger on a person that is confronting you but those had surrendered so the gentleman just started pulling the triggers on the people that had already lied down and uh, really they had the right to leave. Those people had the right to leave, they had the right to face fair trial like anybody else. I think the general approach towards anyone who either kills or threatens another life is that the moment you take away someone's life, you lose your right to live or you threaten someone else's life, then your life deserves to be threatened somehow i guess that's the general approach that the law the law has towards these things mm -hmm. also we don't know whether the road is qualified to tell us the rules of engagement yeah, but, but the account yeah. of course <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. the account of the road also is that uh the road so that those people were f were alive, we're alive, alive and yeah. they sort of surrendered yeah yeah so the police of course said they found uh, three bullets in that ak-47 mm. it was one gun <clears throat> and mm. by the way, I think there were six suspects. Oh, so, so, they four so the guys in the alley on ran away. Yes. So there are two people ran away. Mm. Uh, so I also missed the part, the part where, because, you know, I, I find it hard to, to agree with such killings. Yeah. Yeah. To me, this looks like, it looks like there are summary killings or extrajudicial killings. Yeah. And we've seen this from the C5 from uh, time and again. Mm. Uh, uh, we, by the way, we are not encouraging criminality or anything or supporting criminals. No, but uh, people need to go through the due process of the law. So mm. if they are found with guns, I believe that police can only exchange fire if those people are shooting at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But do you, uh, do you suppose, let's say, if this group of people were terrorizing the community, mm -hmm. that such force would be reasonable? No. What kind of terrorizing are you talking about? Did you ever hear of the 14 boys? Chalala. You see, uh, I hate criminality, yeah. as I already said. Mm. And if I had it my way, I would want all criminals to be dead. Yeah. The problem with that is that if you start doing that, the extrajudicial killings, you end up, uh, these guys sort of operate with impunity, by the way. Mm. And I feel like we have a problem in this country with the C5. Mm. They themselves, when they are passing, you think they are criminals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, how they yeah, operate. Yeah, and they're very likely to cause accidents. Yes. Yeah. Not only that, they're also likely to be involved in criminality. Yeah, that's, We've heard that, stories. that's true. We've also heard stories of them uh, gunning down innocent exactly. bystanders. Yes. Mm, uh, and so, leaving the body for the police to come and pick. Yes. So if they leave such, Im if they have such immunity, then at the end of the day, uh, they'll start killing innocent people and they'll mm. go away with it. Mm. We saw. Uh, is it last year when they killed uh, this pharmacist, a Victor, uh, Victor Art? But you saw that pharmacist in Kamala South, Victor. Oh, the, the one with his wife. Yes, Victor. Chiro. Yes, 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 yes. yes. I saw. I saw. The, the, uh, he was. The, yes, I, I remember. A I case, think we reported on that. Actually, they shot through the car. Yes, yes. A I case remember of that. mistaken identity. And she was pregnant. Yes. Mm -hmm. A case of mistaken identity. And an innocent life was taken mm. because of their way of doing things. Mm. If you look at that story, you won't go up, uh, back to it. But if you look at that story, you'll find that it's also the way that the police were operating that caused all that. The guy wouldn't have run away if the police approached him as the yeah, police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's because, because they approached him as criminals. Like so, criminals. so he thought he was running away from criminals. Yes. Because also that time, that's what I'm saying, we can't go back to it, but that time were the aspect of a lot of criminal activities. Yeah. And people were shooting people and all those mm, things. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I remember there was a phase. Yeah, there yeah. was a phase. So yeah. we need an improvement in the operation of the C5. And I think I'm belittling it by saying an improvement. Because to me, when I see these, I, I see killmongers. Yeah. As much as I don't want criminals around... But the way of doing things by the C5, it leaves, it leaves so much to be desired. Mm. Because look yeah, at that impunity. Yeah. They don't care who's looking. 
Mm. You see, it's, you know, it's like I, they're above I do, the law. I do agree with you because l- let's take um, America, for example. George Floyd was killed. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you take a, a, a full inventory of the case, mm-hmm. there's a longer video of the dash cam that shows how they struggled mm-hmm. with him to begin with mm-hmm. and why they were called there in the first place is because mm-hmm. he submitted a fake, yes. you know, so... Yeah. Of course, he committed some sort of crime, Mm -hmm. but the police that ended up killing him Mm -hmm. faced terrible consequences. Mm -hmm. And I think that system has a way of keeping these people in check. I think if we adopted something like that, where, okay, you as a police officer, Mm. you killed, Mm. you need to be suspended for a while. We need to investigate. Why was the killing? We need dash cams also and body cams in Zambia. Yeah, but for the C5, they'll tell you they don't operate like that. They don't, eh? Yeah, because mm. this this is not my. Do you, su- do you suppose we've been that talking about this thing for a long time? Yes, I know, but I'm saying we need to introduce such to the C5. To, I, I don't to think some, they, would, they would agree to that because they, they wouldn't. Eh? To them, their modus operandi does not allow them. Do, do you to think do they that. are they probably? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was uh, <laughs> wondering what's that. <laughs> well, do you suppose there is a department or a branch of um, these law enforcers in the states, for example, that? Does that operates like the C5? Maybe SWAT? Are these guys brought to account? Even the, are there guys who are not brought to account there when they kill? Who are not brought to account? Uh, of course, yes. So meaning C5 is not that peculiar. No, it's not. Okay. But uh, you see, the the also uh, it's hard also to to compare the two to compare us uh, us and with the Americans mm. because when you talk about SWAT. Uh, those guys go there when there's maybe a situation, a hostage situation. This is a person who needs to die. Mm. Not to walk to Montmompeza, Mwapeza only because suspicious. C5 killed some boys from Matero hmm. and they were found with screwdrivers and uh, they, were, they were suspected to be these people who opened vehicles. That's uh-huh. a very bad crime. Yeah. Those people need to go to prison. They don't deserve to die. No. Yeah. And you see... It's just now that we've heard from someone saying that they actually found these people alive and they started shooting them while they were surrendering. Mm. The other times, the police doesn't don't tell us because we don't see. No one is there to witness. No one is there to witness. But yes. this time, the road yeah. was there to witness. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, I need. I think we need to change our way of doing things. We need a crack squad. If yeah. there's a if there's a if there's a, a siege or there's a situation where this person is threatening a lot of lives and they just have to die at this particular time. We need a squad that needs to go in. That and is kill. able to do that. Yes. Mm. I don't have a problem with that. I've got a problem with the way C5 do things. Yeah. 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 That's that's true. Because it's, when it's you see SWAT, to, yeah. when they are coming, you know that that's SWAT. Yeah. And you know what they are coming to do. You give them chance. Yeah. Yes. Now here, when we don't know whether these are criminals or they're the police. <laughs> so so maybe, maybe at yeah. least a branded vehicle. Uh, yeah, but the police will still refuse to that. That's why I'm saying our situation. Yeah, is but but I'm I'm trying to wonder what we could do. So uh, really, to change what such. you're saying is some. It's a solution. I think of. Yeah. Yeah. If they could be wearing something, it's a solution. Mm. If they could be going on in cases where we need people to die, it's also a solution. Mm. Because sometimes they send them to just dangerous criminals. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that does make sense. That and and apparently they're the only ones who can get into Chibolia. Apparently, I don't know how true that is. Get there how? As in, if there's criminal activity mm-hmm. and they need the police, apparently oh, it's only. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I don't know how true it is. I only hear that that for Chibolia, it's mm. C5. I oh. don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, the you you're awfully quiet about this issue. Is there something about Chibolia you? <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my heart is in the ghetto. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> um, moving on, the court orders the forfeiture of Charity Katangas. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, so what about Charity Katanga? <laughs> George Compound, Mrs. Mrs. and uh, G, we see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Quad Jack and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's a place you talked about, uh, Obama area. What's that oh, place? Uh, Kamanga. Uh, Kamanga, uh, yeah. Kamanga, Kamanga Mulanga. <laughs> Kamanga Mulanga, we see you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the court orders the forfeiture of Charity Katanga's buses and funds. Chibeka Express Limited, a company linked to former Deputy Inspector General of Police, Charity Katanga, has been ordered to forfeit 10 Haiga buses and funds by the Lusaka Magistrate Court. The court's decision comes after the Drug Enforcement Commission, DEC, filed a conviction-based forfeiture application, determining that the assets 
were the proceeds of crime. Katanga, along with unidentified accomplices, allegedly obtained these assets between January 1st, 2017 and, Janu and June 6th, 2022. The ruling is based on Section 10 of the Four Feature of Proceeds of Crime Act 19 of 2010. In a statement, DEC reaffirms its commitment to holding people accountable for criminal activity and recovering illicit assets for the public good. Yeah, I guess everyone is subject to the law, regardless of who they were. It's just sad to see someone who had that level of a position go through this. Inspector General of Police, Deputy Inspector General of Police, we expect that these are the upright people of our society. The mm, people with I no blemish. I don't expect that these days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to expect that with what we are seeing now with, mm. with our supposed leaders. Mm. But we naturally would expect that someone who holds such a position would be... Of course. Yeah, an upright individual. So it's it's quite... What what are Haiga buses? Haiga buses? Mm. Haiga is like a... It's, it's, a, it's a brand. It's a brand, but yeah. is it like um, they are, mini buses? They are luxury coaches. Okay, so they are, they are more of uh, mm -hmm. intercity. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. okay. This Chibeka actually, Chibeka Express Limited, it's, it's an intercity service, servicing company. Okay, have you yeah. been on one? No, no. Okay. I think these ones go to Northern Province. Uh, I don't usually go there. Yeah, oh yeah. No, yeah. Northern Province, that's, uh, that's where there is, is Nakonde. Northern Nakonde. Northern Nakonde or something, I don't know. That's the route going to Tanzania, eh? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Mm. All right. Yeah, so that's crazy. Uh, thoughts and prayers with Miss... Katanga, Mrs. Miss. Mm. Do I always yeah, have to say that not mine? It's 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 not stated whether she's a miss or missus. It just says charity Katanga, but thoughts and prayers. My thoughts and prayers. Thank you. <laughs> and on a sad note, uh, we lost Justin Shonga last week. Yeah. Um, Zambian football player as well as a police officer. Mm. It's quite sad. We do not have the details of exactly what killed him, but we uh, we are told that he had a short illness and. Mm and passed away at Sikanze Police mm -hmm. camp, uh, Hospital yeah, or Clinic. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's yeah. that's what we hear. Are you, you're a football fan? Yeah, of course. Uh, I felt bad by the news. Uh, of course, he hadn't played for a national team for a very long time. Okay. Yeah, but I heard he was just 27, so I'm wondering what happened. Mm. Yeah, but then there was something that I think I should mention. There was a bit of some... I don't know if I can call it a scandal. I don't know. But uh, Patson Daka was on holiday in South Africa. Because mm. this is off season for the clubs. Yeah. So he's been in holiday on holiday in South Africa. So he was posting some pictures of him having fun while we had this funeral. Yeah. And even at the point where the guy was being put to rest, I think that same day, Patson Daka posted some pictures. And there was sort of a backlash from some fans on social media to say, No, I'm mourning your friend, you can't be doing this. Yeah. And Patson Daka came out to apologize in a post on X. Yeah, to say, I know, sorry about that. That was insensitive. Yeah, so, of course, yes, it might have been insensitive. I would agree. Uh, you know, they were playing together in the national team. Your friend is dead and then you're out there partying, you know, in our tradition. At least, even if you're out there, don't show the people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because the the other fact is that it's not everyone who plays together in the national team who are friends, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it might be that they were not that close. So it didn't touch him the way that it touched other people. Yeah. That's understandable. Why did he not play for a while? I don't know. That's the, that's the part where I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess we had uh, probably better people. Yeah, play. maybe. Yeah. That's the only reason I think of. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's quite sad. Mm -hmm. uh, thoughts and prayers are with our family. I can guarantee you, or with his family rather, mm -hmm. I can guarantee you this time it's both our thoughts and prayers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm included. <laughs> both our thoughts and prayers are to the Shonga family. I would like to believe they are the Shonga family. Yeah. Yes, and also in other news, uh, Tanzania, uh, Tanzania has received some high-speed trains. Mm. This is some good technology just within the neck of our woods. Mm. Ready to be unwrapped, Tanzania enters a new age of high-speed rail as service from Dar es Salaam to Morogoro starts Friday, cutting travel time from four hours to one hour, 45, 40 minutes rather. The new train in the photo will be used in Dar es Salaam to Dodoma service. Uh, which will begin July 25th. This is something good. I'm, yeah, I'm really... Yeah, yeah. high-speed train. Yeah, yeah. This is really good. I'm really happy to hear. I hope we can see cross-country trains soon along yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Central, Southern Africa. That would yeah. be great. If we can get to South Africa in mm -hmm. 
45 minutes or you know mm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah too ambitious but yeah <laughs> if we can cut yeah. these uh, well, I still have that technology because I got the good time sorry guys yeah? <laughs> yeah yeah but you see this is a great start for Tanzania Tanzania is really doing fine and uh, uh Samia Sulu Hassan yeah uh, they've done a lot of great things they've completed the the Julius Nyerere uh, hydropower plant we oh, should actually nice. ironically be supplying to Zambia. Nice. Because they're actually working on a line to supply to Zambia right now, uh, as we uh, speak. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I do think, they've been having excess power. I do think there is a lot of hope. Now I've begun to feel hope mm-hmm. about our locating situation. I know we've been bashing Zesco, we've been mm-hmm. bashing the no, government. I know it to be well. Yeah, but well, I am not have a Zesco have... story today. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh now we're talking about it. <laughs> we, we we had to Mr. Mapani. <laughs> yeah, I I'm a, I'm quite hopeful now also because I've noticed the past last the past one week mm. we were experiencing the actual 12 hours of load shedding. Mm. Don't yeah. be deceived, my friend. Oh, oh but I, I wish know, well. I know. Oh, I wish as well. <laughs> you see what I say about this guy? No, I said I wish as well. <laughs> no, 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 you see what I say about this guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And by the way, did you see that story about JJ? Uh, there was an audio that leaked. Where yeah, JJ yeah, yeah. was yeah, having a conversation yeah. with, uh, oh, I don't know if those guys are actually real or they are purported to be JJ and Mr. Tawakawa and also mm. I think he's a permanent secretary, Mr. Matembo, the mm. Ministry of is it Home Affairs, yeah. When they were sort of making a deal to say JJ should mention that he wasn't in his right frame of mind when he was mentioning Clay Sonamasaka and uh, uh, who's the other guy? There was Clayson Hamasaka and um, uh, if the names have just gone past me like this. Trevor Ngoma. Trevor Ngoma. There was a Trevor. There was a Trevor. Trevor something. Wasn't Trevor Mwinde. Trevor Mwinde. Trevor Mwinde. And the other guy is Levin Goma. Yes, yes, yes. So apparently they were telling him that he should say that he wasn't in right state of mind. Apparently there's another statement that is in written which is signed and he doesn't mention those names. Yeah. They're telling him, tell the people to say, there's though there are those statements. There's that statement you can go and read it. I didn't mention these guys. When I mentioned them, I wasn't in the right frame of mind. Dehydration didn't really do yeah, well to yeah, his. Uh, yeah, mm. I just thought I should mention that because it's interesting. It's like people are trying to make a deal when this was something big and we need to find out the truth. You know? If that is true as well, then it would mean that his uh, supposed cases are is a weaponization against him for yeah uh, hasn't it already been clear since from the start it has just not officially (laughs) (laughs) it it has been quite clear and um we are seeing increased activity that suggests to us that uh people in power really are the people in power you know and when they are the ones there there's barely much you can do to as opposition guys or there's barely much you can do. They will just bundle all of you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is just, uh, in the words of Jonah, it's just smelly to me, you know? Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. The whole, if you listen to the audio, it's just smelly, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's like At people... The, people, uh, <laughs> people trying to uh, navigate through the system to make sure that the the right way is not followed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we do use some shortcuts, which is highly suspicious. Anyway. And speaking of uh, highly suspicious shortcuts and whatnot, nine MPs have been declared. Nine MP seats have been declared vacant. Mm. Um, nine MPs have lost their seats. Uh, these are the Pambashi MP Ronald Chitotela. We have the Kawamba MP Nixon Chilangwa, uh, Lupososhi MP Musonda Mpakata, Kamfinsa MP Christopher Kangombe. Chitamba MP, Chitambo. Chitambo MP, Remember Mdale, Poro, Mporokoso MP, Brian Munduvile, Shiwangandu MP, Stephen Kampiongo, Chilubi MP, Mulenga Fube, and Lunte MP, Mutotwe Kafuaya. Mm. It's not very easy to read Zambian names, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's <are> my constituents, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh, all these, uh, ish. we have so many places in Zambia, 10 provinces and all filled with, we have 150 constituencies mm. in total, right? Not 56? I don't know. Uh, did they increase after the 10th province? Uh, I thought we have, okay, I don't know. Oh, they were 156 or one, 156, actually. 
Okay. Okay, we'll get back to you on that. But there are 150 plus <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, yeah. constitu- constituencies. Also, we had nine provinces before, but when we had Michael Sata, he increased them to 10 provinces, which was um, the creation of Mutinga province. Yeah, so Mr. Moetua is in the news again. What led to this judgment actually being passed where the seats were eventually declared vacant, uh, mm. which would imply that these particular MPs have lost their seats in parliament. What triggered this whole thing was a question that Mr. Moetua asked in parliament about whether these MPs were in order presenting themselves in uh, in parliament because the expulsions that had been uh, attached to their names had not been contested or stayed. Therefore, the consequences of such um, expulsions should lead to them losing their seats. But you take a look. From about December 6th, when the expulsion was communicated about these nine members of parliament, there has been no subsisting legal process or action challenging the expulsion of the said nine members before any competent court of jurisdiction within Zambia or elsewhere. And that, Mr. Speaker, there has been no injunction from that date to date restraining the execution or efficacy of such expulsion. Further, Mr. Speaker, there has been no stake so that the implications of the expulsions may not take effect. And to that effect, Mr. Speaker, I seek your guidance whether the honorable members of parliament in issue are in order to join us in this house. Yep, so the speaker responded. He said he'll study the matter extensively as you see in this video. Mm -hmm. I've heard you, but uh, let me reserve my ruling and uh, study the matter extensively. I hope to get to the house in due course to lend uh, my ruling to this serious matter uh, before the floor of the house. The speaker does genuinely seem like a very understanding person. Mm-hmm. From, from his response, he sounded like, you know, no, 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 I've, I've heard you, I'm going to really... Nah, I wouldn't trust a politician. Bro. Uh, yeah? yeah? Would you say the speaker is a politician? He's an MP. He's an elected MP. Oh, wait, so. speakers are MPs. Yes. Everyone who is also, in Nelly is Muti. Huh? Um, Muti, Nelly Muti. She's an MP. Yeah. But um, Nelly Muti is not elected. Nelly, because the president Nelly, can Nelly was appointed. Yes. The president can nominate, sorry. So speakers are either... Oh, I see. So you, you're mem- talking about the members of parliament that are nominated. The eight. Yes. I don't know but if there's still eight. There used to be eight back in the day. There are still eight, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So but you're talking about ones, like so. So you're saying among us the okay, okay, mm-hmm. sorry. Mm-hmm. Go on. Yeah, no, please go. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying Nelly Muti is a speaker that was nomi- nominated among us the nominated yes. MPs. Yes. Whereas he is speaker among us the elected. Yes, okay. exactly. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. This okay. actually was voted for. By the people in the constituents. Okay. Yeah. So he I is. Just a can't poli- remember okay. The okay. Yeah. But would you consider then Nelly Muti a politician since she was? Yes, she's an MP. If you consider MP yeah, as yeah, MPs actually, as politicians, actually, member of is. parliament. Yeah, yeah, right, you're right. Yeah, mm, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But you see, we need to have this spirit of the speaker should be someone who should be the referee. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this guy actually, uh, he's uh, Mr. Moy is the, he's the second deputy speaker. Okay. So we have the the speaker. Then we have got the the deputy speaker. Okay. Then we have got the second deputy speaker. Okay. This is him. Yeah. So I just want to us to put a bit of some context with this issue because uh, this also is as a result of the wrangles that the people in Patriotic Front have been having. Yeah. Just yeah. before you go further to give those details, yeah. what is the difference between the speaker? The um, I know a lot of our viewers may not also understand okay. speaker, deputy, and the second deputy. Uh so it's just like the one one of them is the main. Then we have the 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 vice, and then mm. the vice of the vice. So the vice of the vice tends to sit when both are un- exactly. unavailable. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Yes. So uh, what happened is that we had this issue with uh, Mao Samp, right? 
the mm. pharmacy issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this issue, you know, it, it drains me a lot. Yeah. Because also I don't <laughs> like talking about PF. Yeah. Yeah. So we had this issue of mouse samba where, and I, I should also mention that it started when we heard that Edgar Lungu is coming back to contest. Yes. That's when, because they, 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 the PF have not gone, they didn't go for a convention before the convention of Mao Sampa. Yeah. So they didn't go for, like, since the, the 2021 elections. Yeah. So there was sort of a vacuum, a leadership vacuum. But for them, they were saying Mr. Lung is still the president of PF until he hands over, until after a convention. They even made people pay, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Fast forward, after we saw that Edgar Lung is coming back, Mao Sampa had a convention, which we should mention that this convention, uh, had the police there. It happened on the 24th of October when we had the foreign uh, head of state in the country. Yeah. This is sort of the main opposition, patriotic front. Yeah. I don't think that would have happened under normal circumstances. No, I don't this, think so. It's like the police and the state was aiding this process. Mm. So after Mao Sampa took over patriotic front, he changed some names uh, of the central committee and then he changed the 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 uh, the leader of opposition in parliament. Mm. And the, in fact, before that, what happened is that they had a press briefing, when uh, Galungu and Uka, and so there were some MPs who were present. Mm. This is where the expulsion came from. They mm. attended an, uh, a the press Uka, briefing by yes. Uka, yes. As Mr. Chavinga so angrily says. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so seven of them were suspended at that time. Mm. Then for the two they were suspended after, they failed to pay their, I don't know if it's monthly or annual contribution according okay. to the PF of Mausam. Okay. So that's how come the two others were expelled, making them nine. Mm. Now, after this happened, there was an issue in parliament where, in fact, it started with, uh, because these guys, they went to court, of course. Mm. Uh, PF went to court to dispute Mausam by taking over the party. Yeah. Yeah. Not to dispute the, the, the expulsions, by the way. Mm. So we don't have a case per se, and now it's coming. But right now we don't have a case per se which uh, which uh, has to determine whether uh, these guys were rightfully expelled or not. Yeah. So as at the time, Mr. Muetwa was asking that question, there was no case in court. Uh, no, we can't say that. But there is a case because hmm. uh, this someone again asked to say, why do we have these people? Yeah, and but my, my, my question. Muti, okay. By then, uh, yeah. she said. There's a case in court ah, which yes. is tied to this matter, yes, which yes. is of the, the other PF disputing Mausam. So the but, case wasn't directly involving... Okay, so because Mausam's mm -hmm. seat is being questioned mm -hmm. in court, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I use those terms loosely, yeah. uh, the expulsion which resulted from his presidency mm -hmm. Will then be questioned. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So it's directly involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the speaker made that ruling. Mm. Uh, who is Nelly Muti? But we can't also. Where is Nelly Muti? Where was she during? I don't know. That's questionable as well. Because yeah. uh, fast forward, uh, we we saw that uh, it was a bit quiet because these guys were were expelled in December 2023. Yeah. Yeah. So it became a bit quiet, and then we saw uh, for us the public what we saw is it Mao Sampa going to meet Ed Galong recently. Yeah. yeah. We saw a picture, mm. and then. Eh, that is like it ruffled a few feathers. Oh, yeah. That's when now we had now we to ask him to say, are these people supposed to be here? <laughs> yeah, <You know? laughs> yeah. Sort of, because initially when the expulsion happened, people were speculating to say, ah, so it's like uh, Mao Samba is being used by some people who want to cause by-elections. Mm. Yes. So now that Mao Samba was back with those guys in bed, and also because Mao Samba knew that, uh, uh, this Muetua was going to go to parliament to bring up this issue. So, oh, so, okay, okay. so when he knew about it, apparently he was in South Africa uh, attending Pan-African parliament. Mm. He had to fly immediately mm. to come so that in the morning he should write a letter and take it to parliament before Muetua makes that statement to say, no, these guys actually want to sort this matter out. These have been forgiven. <laughs> they are no longer expelled. <laughs> he wrote a letter. Yeah. According to him, because the letter actually was received, it has a date stamp of, uh, is it 3rd July? Not 3rd July. 3rd July. On a Friday. Mm -hmm. No, it has a, a date stamp of 3rd July, but apparently, according to him, he took it on uh, the Friday before 3rd July. Mm -hmm. That should be 29th June. That's when he took it there. So to him, he was thinking... The, the speaker will rule to say, oh, no, these guys are sorting it out so we cannot take these members of parliament 
out of the house. Mm. But it's like when I'm going to the front run, the whole situation. Mm. And, and then, a very understanding speaker. Yes. And then this was on a Friday around 11 hours. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday was a holiday. Tuesday was a holiday. Wednesday, we saw the speaker come in to expel those people. Yeah. So this ruling was given a couple of days after the question. By yeah, Mr. We can't Michael. even say that because it, it, the, the it question almost, was on the, Friday. On the video, you know, the video looks like it was the same day. Oh, but, no, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can tell it from the tie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, we did get the the second deputy speaker's ruling on the matter, mm. which, oh, people are not um, uh, amused by, but take a look. I consider that a vacancy has occurred in the following. Mabashe, Kawamba, Lupososhi, Kafisa, Chitambo, Mpolokonso, Shwangandu, Chiruvi, June 2024. In view of the in view of the above, yeah. So that was the the ruling that the the speaker gave. I don't know whether to call it a ruling. Uh, that was his conclusion. He declared the seats vacant, mm -hmm. and yeah, this just started a whole a whole world of confusion within the patriotic the front. <laughs> oh, it yeah. was it was just crazy. We had. Based on this particular event, I believe Mr. Chavinga has been the leader of opposition. Yes, yes. In parliament. Putin, yes, yes. Th that was Mr. Sampas doing, right? Yes. Yes. And now the same leader of parliament that was made leader of parliament by Mr. Chavinga has now gone back to take presidency over the party. And he's talking about how uh, Mr. Sampas shouldn't even try anything. He says if he's given audience by media houses. Anyway, I don't think that's the next thing we're about to play, yeah, but... Uh, yeah, but uh, just on that, uh, yeah. because Mao Samp also uh, sort of appointed uh, this Ngonga. Yes. Uh, what's his name again? Danny Ngonga, I don't know. I've, I've forgotten what his first name. I only know him as uh, Ngonga. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ngona, yes. Yeah. I said Ngonga. Yeah, we, we, had a, we, we had a friend. Ngona. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, understandable. <laughs> yeah. So he yeah. appointed Mr. Ngona as the Secretary General. Hmm. And now in all this, according to him, that's why he flew from South Africa because he was asking Mr. Ngona to write to parliament to say these guys were forgiven them. Yeah. But this man was the darling. So Mr. Ngona had a plan. Yes. According to Mao Sampa. Hmm. That's why he actually had to fly here. Hmm. The same Mr. Ngona is the one who has fired Mao Sampa. <laughs> <laughs> Someone appoints you and then you fire them. <laughs> Yeah, this is crazy. This is crazy. So th this is the, the confusion that's going on right now uh, in the patriotic front. And here's a glimpse of Mr. Ngona speaking on the same issue. Yeah, uh, yeah. people should see who Mr. Ngona is. Yeah. So PM, UPND, SP, uh, the Christian, whatever, we, we work together, but we differ in ideologies or policy. But, okay. Yes, he has written letter there. The, com the Central Committee has expelled him. The central media has expelled him. And also when you go to parliament, we look at matters. We are also recalling him from Pan-African parliament. I'm in charge. I'm, I'm in charge. <laughs> you know, I wonder, is he president of the country or? I know. I'm in charge. This is, you are the president of a finished party, sir. <laughs> like a sect. <laughs> of a finished party. It's you are the sick. third president of that party. <laughs> How are you feeling like that? <laughs> How are you in charge? In charge. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to recall Mao Samba from the Pan-African Parliament. Oh my goodness. Uh, something just spelt into my, just flew into my coffee. Oh, oh my. Uh, Chofia refilled my coffee. Flying objects here. <laughs> uh, can you imagine? <laughs> I hope I didn't sip, uh, sip, uh, sip from this it's okay. prior to seeing it. Or maybe I can just remove it. You remember that thing we used to say? Kashto mm. Wobe. <laughs> 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 yeah so oh and you know the video has just paused where he's like uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean charge. charge yeah so this is uh, one of the legal representatives of the PF which PF is this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is PF of Ed Galungu oh, yeah. and now it looks like they are Ed Galungu and Mao Sam so to say they, now both are claiming to be the it's, president it's, it's like like they have in South Africa what do they call it collision mm. this is the PF collision mm. uh, they are legal representative or mm. one of their legal representatives mm. spoke on the illegality of what happened in parliament and he describes how that uh, the speaker herself had mentioned that there is a case in court that's already open concerning this matter therefore we cannot uh, determine whether these seats are vacant or not 
Uh, yet the second deputy speaker did determine that fact. And so this is his explanation. Yeah, sorry, before that. Yeah. Uh, if you like what you see, press that subscribe button, the like button, and ping the notification bell. This video I'm about to show you is uh, a bit long, longer than usual. And uh, it's from Prime TV. So it's got some, some other headlines that are not part of what we are talking about. So just bear with us, guys. In making this controversial ruling, the speaker again ignored uh, the fact that there are proceedings before the court and this office cannot deal with the matter involving those members of parliament, completely ignoring it. The speaker also ignored a cherished principle that was pronounced even by the first, the speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Madam Nelly Muti, on the occasion of when Honorable Stotela on the 23rd of November 2023 raised a point on the floor of the House saying that the Patriotic Front had at that time expelled Honorable Mao Sampa, and that he was wondering why Mao Sampa was sitting in his seat of member of parliament when actually he had been expelled. The Speaker of the National Assembly, citing existing precedents, made a pronouncement that she could not deal with the matter involving Honorable Mao Sampa because the matter was before the courts of law, i.e. the Speaker cannot deliberate on any matter if they've got notification that the matter is before the courts of law. Unfortunately, today, the speaker who was making a pronouncement did not find it fit to be constrained by the fact that there's a, there are court proceedings at the instigation of these nine members of parliament. You know, and the other thing that was also ignored is the fact that under the current constitutional dispensation, under Article 75, that the speaker was citing, the speaker of National Assembly has no mandate under the constitution to declare a seat for a member of parliament vacant. Because in the constitutional setting that we have in this country, it's only the constitutional court which has a final jurisdiction after hearing the matter on its merits to pronounce that the expulsion of a member of parliament was valid or invalid. And if it was valid, the consequences will follow. The speaker only received notification from court once the matter is completed and the responsibility of the speaker after that is to notify the ECZ of the existence of the vacancy. This was pronounced in the case of Kambuiri versus the Attorney General, when Dr. Patrick Matibini was speaker, when he purported to have expelled Honorable Kambuiri from Parliament. Mr. Kambuiri challenged that matter, it was before the courts of law, and the Constitutional Court gave guidance on the role of the speaker under Constitutional Amendment Act Number 2 of 2016 where they said the responsibility of the speaker in the current constitutional setting is merely that of a referee. You are only an arbiter. So what we have done as the patriotic front, the affected members of the party, and Secretary General I think is going to expand on that position, is that we have sought legal counsel and we are taking yet another legal challenge of this matter before the courts of law. Uh, he does have a point. That was a long video Mr. Chofaya mentioned. Uh, he does have a point, but honestly speaking, that's not where my concern lies. My concern is, how does a PF have access to such an eloquent person, someone who can explain legal matters like this? This scares me a little bit because really? I don't think the PF should have someone like this on their side. Oh, then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he's been there for a while. He's a uh, Chisanga. I've just forgotten his first name. Okay. Chisanga, yeah. He's, what he's what, what does he face. do? Since he is saying they are seeking legal... Mm -hmm. Uh, is he not the, the legal person they should be seeking legal advice from? Did he say legal advice? Yeah, they said they're seeking legal counsel. No, I think that he was meant his last that, uh, statement. He meant they are, they, are, they are seeking legal guidance, so to say, like they are going to take the case to court. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, anyway, that, that, that does make sense. Yeah, so, yeah, which to me, as I mentioned earlier, this is going to be a protracted legal battle. Mm. A so, what? Sorry? Protracted legal battle. Okay, okay. Yeah, so for us to have elections in these constituencies, it will take time. Mm. And probably it will take a year. Mm. Yeah, because this yeah. thing will be... They might court. just meet the actual elections, eh? Uh, yeah, we can say that. Mm. Yeah, because also the, these guys are going now to to take the actual case to, to, to court. Yeah. They are going to court to court and say, the speaker did something illegal here. Yeah. And then the court is now, now going to adjudicate. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be protracted. I think it will be nice to see, because this also ties into the the the... the the Rangos, as you called them, in the Patriotic Front. Mm. Yeah, so it, it would be nice to see.
Yeah, yeah nice it will really be, because, be, be nice to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because also, uh, there's been speculation that the state has got a hand in all this. Yeah, yeah, and it looks like that to me right now, mm. from whatever we've seen, from how the speaker's office is behaving as well. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be nice <laughs> to see. Indeed. It will be a very nice thing to watch. Uh, yeah. There are some also other valid points that other people have brought in. We'll play a clip by Mr. Kalabasun, but there's issues of how can we have a by nine by elections now. When we are still trying to gather up money to pay debtors, we're still g- trying to gather up money because we have uh, a very serious food deficit because we know that uh, FRA didn't handle our main situation well. Mm. And then we had El Nino. We are struggling with electricity Not right now. Not the FRA, the European government as well. Yeah, I was avoiding saying that, but Mr. Chofai is quite bold. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so we, we have all these issues that seriously require money. Mm. Uh, which just makes it look like or feel like a by-election is something unnecessary right now. Like political issues are not our priority as the people of Zambia. Uh, Yeah, and Mr. Kalaba. We have learned with shock and uh, disbelief the horrendous and inconsiderate ruling by the second speaker of the National Assembly, Mr. Moses Moyo, in which he has declared nine PF seats vacant. By implication, the nation will be facing by-elections in the nine affected constituencies at the time when the country is facing a national disaster of hunger affecting six million Zambians. Long hours of countrywide load shedding and the spiraling high costs of living affecting every Zambian. As citizens first, we consider this ruling to be ill-timed, politically motivated, and highly inconsiderate. We urge the affected members of parliament to challenge this matter before the courts of law. I thank you. Yeah, I do agree with Mr. Kalaba on uh, majority of the things he says about how it is quite actually highly political, politically motivated. Mm-hmm. It's a bit unnecessary for the times. It's ill-timed. We, we, we can't start talking about a by-election now. I just don't think that's the wisest of things. I don't know what your view on, on this whole matter is in light of, mm-hmm. of having a by-election <laughs> yes. and us going through what we're going through. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you look like you have very interesting things to say. <laughs> <laughs> so Mr. Kanawa is a politician. Yeah. No, okay, let's take away. Mm-hmm. Let's let's take away, let's forget about who said it. Yeah, so I I'm, I'm going to I'm going somewhere actually. Okay. So okay. Mr. Kanawa is a politician. Uh in, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, no matter what we are going through, a by-election is a necessity. People need representative. So what I mean is, if in uh, Matero, for instance, since mm. I, I come from there, uh, if the MP died, oh, oh, you do? God forbid, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. somewhere near yeah. Matero, <laughs> yeah. if God forbid the MP died, mm. are we going to say because there's hunger in the country, we can't have by-elections to represent the people of Matero? That wouldn't be fair. Uh, so that's just an example. Mm. So if it's necessary to have a by-election, then we need to have it. Now, this which we're having this by-election, is it necessary? Who is causing it? Who can stop it? So mm. we need to answer those questions. If Mr. Kalawa thinks that this is being orchestrated by the state, then it won't work to tell them to say, reverse it. Because <laughs> it's already done. That's what they want. <laughs> it will not work. Yeah. To me, what I can say, if it's indeed been orchestrated by the state, then it's a shame indeed. Mm. We're going through these troubled times. Why would someone want to orchestrate an expensive by-election? Mm. Yeah. So that, that, those are my thoughts about it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It, that was quite balanced, actually. <laughs> okay. You you tried not to lean too much on one side. I think <laughs> I think it's true. I agree with uh, uh, Mr. Chufai here. We definitely need it break it goes down to who is causing it mm-hmm. who can stop it yeah. all those questions are very valid mm. um yeah, yeah. also do you think the, the the state the president can stop it let's say for instance maybe the state is not hypothetically mm. the state is not involved are you asking me specifically about our president our current president no like right now does the president have the power what can he do within his power to uh, stop it? Uh, mm. That uh, that I don't know because you know the other thing is that I've got a maybe feeling the sp- that maybe the speaker I think the speaker or the courts I think it lies in yeah I uh, don't think the speaker because as the lawyer was saying the speaker is the mayor oh oh, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess the courts I think the courts are the only ones who can who can do this okay 
I think, or the party, maybe, or maybe mm. if the party like reverses the, the expulsion. So you think there's no way where the president can come in? To I, me, I don't you know. know I, I, I would need to understand that on a, from a legal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I could be, uh, I could know less, but mm. if I was the president, I was, I would do, call the warring parties, mm. which is almost impossible right now. And sit down with them. Yes. And sit Ooh. down with them. So you guys, <laughs> you are the same PF, Chawinga. Oh, not Chawinga. Because Chawinga in here, by the way, is, uh, I'm looking for a better term. Mm. I'd been cheat on more this. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, he's yeah, not yeah. changing anything. Apart from it that, looking that's like why it's so being sh- used. It's very shocking mm-hmm. to see him believe. <laughs> so there's nothing that Chavinga can do here. Yeah. Because also the PF, the, 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 they went to court because after Mao Samba fired the, uh, Ngonga, they went to court these guys to say that Mao Samba can't do that. So the court issued like a, a, a stay or something. I don't know what mm, they call it. Mm, yeah, mm. which means that they are going back to the time when Mao Samba was the president and this whole thing was not there. So this mm. case is continuing this week, actually. Mm. Yeah. I don't know if you see this after Tuesday, probably would have had say, another development. Yeah, oh, yes. That's that's important to mention. Yeah. Um, M-O-A-S, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what, what, this what, is what, Media, what? Okay, Media Owners Association of Zambia. Okay. Yeah. So they got they got infuriated by Chavinga's statements yes. in a press briefing. Yeah. yeah. By the way, this was an emergency press briefing. It was done in the evening. Yeah. The evening of the the the... The, the decision by the 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 speaker to expel these people. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it was a, an Mr. evening of Rangos. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chavinga, very excited about his newly found power. Uh also took the opportunity to condemn uh, ECL, talking about how he sacrificed so much for ECL. He talked about his trip to Dubai and how when he was thinking in Dubai, mm. he began considering, look at how much I've sacrificed for these people. But ECO hasn't done anything for me. He also took the liberty to threaten <laughs> media houses that gave uh, Mr. Sampa airtime. You can check out his rough speech. <laughs> As acting president, yes. Yes. any masquerade, yeah. any masquerade, yeah. who is going to masquerade himself yeah. that I'm PF president? Yeah. One. If you be covered and reported by the media institution, I'm on you as the media institution. Not threatening. If, if I hear anybody masquerading that I'm Secretary General of the party, and you media institution will start with that same person, plus the media institution, we are not threatening. <laughs> it's a brother and advice. Yeah, uh, that was Mr. Chavinga. And um, his yeah. comments weren't taken so well by the media yeah, community. Yeah, by the way, they took them seriously because Mr. Chavinga is one of the people who was spearheading the liquidation of... The oh, yeah, system. yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, yeah. yes, yes. And Costa mentions it, actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like yeah. how Costa came out. Cle- like, guys, if there are people you should not... Uh, provoke it's people who have media power, yeah, like Costa. I yeah, think the president of the media association, media yeah, owners association. I think he has got like that ability to just like finish you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this was Costa's uh response. Observed the regrettable remarks issued by one Mafinga member of parliament, Robert Chavinga, in which he is essentially threatening to close down or liquidate any media house that will give coverage to Mr. Mao Sampa as president of the Patriotic Front. We take note that Mr. Chavinga was involved in the liquidation of the Post newspaper's receivership manager and his boastful claim of being a liquidation specialist to threaten the media. Mr. Chavinga's threats are deeply troubling and are indeed an affront to freedom of the press in our country. Tolerating reckless statements such as the one issued by Mr. Chavinga can leave a dangerous precedence of media harassment even under unwarranted circumstances. We therefore encourage journalists and media owners not to be cowed down or intimidated by these threats. We equally want to warn Mr. Chavinga that we will not be cowed, intimidated or be threatened by his frivolous and baseless statements. We are pulled and remain committed to freedom of the press and we shall not be intimidated by such tactics. 
The Media Owners Association stands in solidarity with all media professionals in our country and reaffirms our commitment to defending the freedom of the press. Uh, I think we need powerful people like Costa who are not politicians. Yeah. Uh, although we know that media organizations are mostly political, yeah, and politically yeah. Incli inclined, yeah, um, I don't know. I could be biased, but uh, I think no, you, Diamond you do have you do have a point. Yeah, I think Diamond TV is one of those that uh, that are doing good. They're seemingly neutral. We yeah, saw them cover yeah. the the election. What do you call that? The 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 uh, results. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, the whole election actually. The whole election, mm -hmm. and they were quite. I think it was on Diamond TV that we saw the whole wrangles with, uh, what was her name, Martha, the lawyer. Martha Mshipe. Yeah, Martha mm -hmm. Mshipe. We saw playing to the gallery with mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Nkombo. Mm -hmm. It was Diamond TV that made us privy to all this. Yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of accusation towards the government and towards the state concerning what's happening in the PF, saying this is a state-sponsored mm -hmm. division of the party. Mr. Uh, Tabokawana, gave a good response in my view. I think I like what he said uh, about how the PF is growing so big that they need three parties, but you can, three presidents, but you can check it out. <laughs> they should deal with their matters. And the best way to deal with the matter is to be frank with yourself. Frank with themselves to ensure that they deal with what is going on than to try and lay blame. This has got nothing to do with outsiders or anybody outside the patriotic front as a party and i want to take this opportunity to distance the government the president state house from anything that has to do with the rangos in pf i think what is clear is that now pf has really really grown into a very big political party so big that it requires three presidents and two secretary generals because it's very big so they must now explain to the nation how they are transforming themselves into the Fantastic Five. Oh, I, I really enjoyed that speech. <laughs> you do, huh? I noticed. What, what's, what's your favorite part? The, the thing that it has grown to... so big. It's, it's so big that it needs three presidents and two SGs. It seems like sarcasm. Huh? Yeah, it is. <laughs> ah, yeah, I really like that. And... Um, uh, we also, yeah, go on. Yeah, you see, my comment on that is that uh, from the start of this whole PF debacle, when Mao Sampa, as I mentioned when he was at Mulungushi there, mm -hmm. the mere fact that the police was there to protect him when we had a foreign, dign a foreign head of state, not just a dignitary mm -hmm. in the country, it was Independence Day, that's the perfect excuse for the police to deny a poli uh, an opposition party to have a function. Exactly. Or an event. Exactly. Like who understand. One. Everyone who understands. Yeah. If they try to do anything, even me, I'll come out and... Mm -hmm. guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they allowed it. To me, that was the start mm. of the state's interference. Yeah. The time that they were, the, there was a debacle at uh, thing at... Uh, Secretary? The Secretary. Yeah. The police, we saw how they protected Mao Sampa, yeah. and he went to lock there and stopped Ed Galungu from accessing the premises. Yeah. That is state involvement. Mm. So I don't think it gets bigger than this. I don't know if there are dark corner meetings, which is a possibility, mm. uh, but already there is already involvement from the state. Yeah, there's, there's very implicit involvement. Yeah. Um, by the way, if you have been following the show, then you know we have covered all that uh, mm -hmm. Uh, we have mentioned here. And if you haven't been watching the show, please do subscribe, hit the bell and share. And you can just go through what we have aired in the past few months and you'll be able to catch up on this whole uh, PF. We began reporting on it as early as December last year. Mm -hmm. So we reported right from the beginning when, when Mr. Lungo said he's back mm -hmm. into active politics and all that stuff. And speaking of Mr. Lungo, um, he said PF would is safe in the hands of the one that Mr. Sata left it with him, of course. And he says he will only leave it in the hands of someone who's ready to take it up. Apparently, Mr. Sampa is not ready to take it up. <laughs> Adad to the rescue. Uh, yeah, Adad to the rescue. <laughs> so, yeah, Mr. Lungo. I'm ready to engage and embrace anyone who erred or went astray to come back to PF. PF is a bigger family. And Mr. Sata left it in my hands, and I'll leave it in the hands of those who are willing to embrace all of us yes. when the time comes. We are talking to Mao Sampa, and I think he, for now, it will be premature for me to say anything beyond the fact that he, we have healthy contacts, and he, we are looking for a way 
of putting the bad patch we experience behind us, and this will be done pretty soon. When he says we're talking to Mao Sampa, it's like he's trying to make his uh, whole his whole that's his whore. Yeah, <laughs> it's like he's trying, <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> it's, try, it's, it's like he's trying to make the whole thing credible, you know. Like we're talking about using Mao Sampa's name, yeah, yeah, to 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 create, yeah, yeah. yeah. Give but at the same time, Mao Sampa is claiming that he's still the president of PF. Yeah, that's a crazy thing. And you know, Edgar Longo is also saying it's PF still has three Mr. legitimate. PF has three legitimate. I've told you, Chavinga, don't forget about Chavinga. I know in his in his head, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's, in his head is legitimate. Yeah. And by the way, in that press briefing, apparently they had police protection. Ah, the Chavingas of this world. Yes, apparently at his house they were there as well. The police. Does the PF need? Does opposition need police? Protection. Uh, any every citizen needs poli police protection if they are in trouble. Perceived oh, trouble. Oh, okay. Perceived. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That does, that does make sense. Yeah, but that, then yeah. but then the thing is that they only protect you when it comes to politics and politicians. They only protect you if they like what you're saying. Ah. If you do, they don't like what you're saying, they they are, they are the ones who are coming to court. Yeah, no. Sean, Sean Tembo wouldn't say the same <laughs> about the, the police protection. <laughs> when he sees them at his house, they are coming to court. <laughs> he was like, "Ah, you you you're traumatizing my children. You're you're, you're traumatizing my children." <laughs> Not that it's funny. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> did we ever play that video here? I, I hope we did. Yes, I think we did. We did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. crazy. Yeah. So it's interesting, but you see, it's funny if Ma, if Mr. Lungu. President Lung trusts Mao Sampa, mm. then he's a funny man. Yeah. Because why would you trust Mao Sampa? Politicians are funny. Mao Sampa uh, ditched him before, I think, even... Uh, remember before he was the mayor, he ditched mm. him. Mm. Uh, then he came back. Mao Sampa has yeah. always been that estranged guy from the PF. Yes. Yeah. He was forgiven, made him stand as mayor, and then he was an MP. Then he ditched them after, I think. He, in fact, Mao Sampa is on record saying Mr. Lung is not fit to rule. The time is as passed for him, mm. which I agree totally. Mm. Uh, so I don't know what he thinks right now, Mao mm. Sampa, mm. by sitting down with him, having tea and uh, trying to make him uh, the leader again. Yeah. Yeah. So, but for, for Mr. Lungu, it's very funny because would you trust Mao Sampa? No. Because this is like Munda Oxta betray a Bokamba Soro, I'm still forgive a Bokamba betray food. They came back and a BCB. Yeah. They came back and a BCB. They are no, what did you say? Taking back and a BCB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's something it's, like it's that. It's quite toxic. Or look to Mumba politics, they are no permanent enemies, not this. Yeah. 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 This one to me, it shows that uh, people are selfish. This is power play, you know. They want to show who's boss. Uh, they want to be the ones in the driving seat. Yeah. yeah. Even if it's just for five years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that was uh, a great show. What do you think? Yeah, I think it was a good one. It was a good show. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. I actually enjoyed it. It was a long show. Good show. You guys will definitely enjoy this one. And please do get us to 1K subscribers. We are excited to see that so we can buy more coffee. I was going to do the whole, but then it was going to actually pour. <laughs> yeah, so um, it, that was a great show. Uh, from Mr. Chofaya and I, we shall see you on the next one. Wait, you didn't tell me about the closing video. You're a smart guy. <laughs> Guys, I legit forgot. I legit forgot. Um, yeah, the nine MPs in question that have been uh, expelled and eventually also declared vacant, whose seats have been declared mm -hmm. vacant, um, they had very bold and pompous things to say. This was prior to their, of course, being declared, uh, their seats being declared vacant. This was just after their expulsion. And these threats were directed towards Mr. Sampa, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, they were saying, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sampa and the friends. <laughs> yes, Mr. Sampa and his colleagues. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know, and that's the same language Mr. Lungu used at the rally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, guys, see you on the next one. Bye bye. Ukulanda kwa wakumwayu mfuila wale tila. Ifuwe nge chupanicha PF tuwa tila. Tulekele ama koti ya puishe nturubu ndishi. Pantumuma koti, emu tupuishi janshi, ukupusana kwa vantu. 
Ero vala ndo kutila nga chafika pane mbe ne mbe Paja pa kutibantu wa mbomvela manje kutu kainda kukoti Palipe vameno za buwela hako na avu vabwela Waka mbatinishi mutu Nikuzi chita defend Valela ndo kutila wale fwa yukula wafi uvu kangalume Valo ndoro fwa batu salwa wawonse wa emu pia wekeri hapa wa salwa na avantu So we mutunga waisa nubu kangalume ya tuwiso nyonge wa mpando Kuwa salwa wino wino Enate chipu wapa kuteka lefe ya tinyonge nyo chipu na chicha wu emu pi Apono mbe putu wala fika nomba Epa la wama Hey, like what you see? I know you do Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao!